G'day, today's little project. I was selling a carousel CD player to someone a couple of weeks ago and he said, I've got another one that doesn't work and if you can fix it, you can have it. I went, fantastic. He said, I'll tell you what, I've also got an amplifier that doesn't work, but can you fix that and I'll pay you to fix it. So anyway, what have we got? We've got a Sony uh, CDP C325. CDP C325, I've never seen one of these before, five disc carousel. This is the Pioneer A30 stereo amplifier that he said doesn't work, but he did say if you drop it, it works for, it can work for a while, which suggests that it's got a dry joint. Uh, but anyway, that's a project for another day. This one is, uh, we'll, I'll power this up and see if we can get this fixed. Hopefully it's just a belt. It's, he basically said that the drawer doesn't open. So anyway, I might power it up and see what it does. Okay, we've got some power on. Hey, signs of life. That's excellent. So that's a great start. Press open. <laughs> Opens like a dream. All right, I might put some CDs in here. Maybe there's nothing wrong with this one at all. I might put some CDs and see if it actually reads. All right, it could be a fluke, but I might change the belts anyway. Right, got some test CDs. Press play. See what happens. Because it may not be closing enough. Sometimes that happens. They don't close enough to actually engage and play and looks like this one is actually perfectly fine. Okay, hunt for another disc. Now I don't think this model has a disc exchange, so on disc exchange systems you can actually keep one playing and change the other four. So okay, disc skip, let's just have a look. Now that just skips to the next available disc. So you can't actually exchange a playing disc in this model. But looks like this is a winner. I haven't yet plugged into an amp. Uh, I've got a phones outlet here. So, but if nothing else, I'll certainly give this one a clean and put it out for sale. All right, so here is the inside of our CD player. So, one clamp, one laser mechanism, and one belt drawer. So, let's fire this up, and it's actually reasonable tension on this, but we might change this one anyway. Uh, this is actually, okay, that's the carousel belt. It's not the opening belt, so we may have to eject the front drawer first. I also want to clean this up, because it's a little bit dirty, and I, I want to basically use some a little bit of a soft brush to get inside all these cracks and clean this out uh, get it ready for sale okay okay so for this one don't adjust this this adjusts the tray alignment up and down the clamp alignment so that's uh, that should be fixed. So we've got a belt there. And if we turn it over, and we've got to undo all these screws on the bottom so that we can access the bottom. And you can see that's our belt there. And it's actually a toothed belt. So I'm actually not going to change that at all because that is a tooth belt. So you can definitely see that there's no way that that can slip, which is really good. But I'm going to take the front off, I'm going to clean it, and then we'll reassemble. Okay, so we've got a screw up here and a screw up here, and there's three screws at the bottom. Gently slide this off. Okay, that's still plugged in, so let's fix that. Now just be aware, if you slide the front panel out, you're going to dislodge this ribbon cable here. So that means taking the back off again, and so that when you reassemble this, you can gently slide this ribbon cable back into this female, and you can reassemble the whole unit. But this will definitely pull out if you try and pull the front panel out. Now I am going to replace this top belt, by the way. Yep. 
Okay, get a new belt for the top and we'll go. Now when it comes time to replacing belts, you don't actually need to go to Sony or go to uh, and look for a specific belt. If you look for a specific belt, you'll end up getting charged a, an absolute small fortune. So what I do is I just buy these generic belts. So I think this is everything from 20 to, yeah, we'll take that one off, 20 to, to sort of 120 mil, something like that. And you just find one that has about the right tension. I've found one that's pretty much identical. And there we go, a little bit more tension. Okay, we'll power this up, see if it works. Now I was playing with this earlier and it's actually clipping. If I disc skip, I'll try and show you. So you can see it's actually clipping on that. So what I need to do is adjust this screw down, this little grub screw, just to crank that up a little bit so it no longer taps. And I've got a disc, I'll put it in and we'll see if it reads. Okay, press play. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So if we go to the ne next disc, which is disc number four. It'll go all the way around. Keep going till it finds one. Fantastic. All right. Looks like this is good. I've given this a little, just a little bit of a clean, just with a damp cloth, and uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just going to reassemble, and we'll go from there. But everything on this works. Really quite a nice player. Not particularly sophisticated uh, because it doesn't do in-disc changes. So you can't keep one disc playing while you exchange the other four, which is called disc exchange. But still a very, very nice unit. 1993. I believe.